guys, this is so overdue and I hope you'll bear with me because this is the first time ever I'm recording video in my bathroom. Number two, it's this first time recording with my new iPhone. So I'm also a little bit like, where do I look? You guys know I'm used to recording video on my um, video thingy. Camcorder is what we used to call it back when I first started YouTubing, but anyway. It is what it is, and I wanted to put this post up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my daily makeup tutorial for you. The reason I'm using air quotes is, I really don't feel like I'm teaching you, I'm just showing you the products that I use, how I do it, why I use it, and how I make this 51-year-old face look presentable. So this is me without a stitch of makeup on. I am, um, and I will do a separate video on this. I am using some really great new skincare. You guys know I've started with my baseline of Globiotics, which is medical grade skincare. They're fantastic. And then when I went to get Botox recently, um, Shakira shared with me this. This is more of a treatment skincare versus just moisturizer and stuff, but it's really helping to, because one of the things that we're gonna start addressing, and I won't get too deeply into it, but I definitely have some damage um, on my chest, and um, I have a lot of scarring on my neck. You can probably see from here. Now, the scarring on my neck is not gonna be typical for a lot of you. It's from one bad procedure um, that I had with a uh, cosmetic, uh, surgeon injector person up in Austin um, she did a really bad what's the word um, I can't think of all therapy okay and I had a very bad reaction and I was I, I swole up and I, I had all of these scars so I've got scars from that and then also one of the things that happens with me from a hormonal balance perspective, but also, or imbalance perspective, excuse me, but also from, um, sorry guys, haven't had my second cup of coffee. Um, food sensitivity, food reactivity is I will get these rock hard bumps on my neck and the problem is I scratch at them. And that's why, so this is a lesson to all of you. Don't scratch at bumps on your neck. This is why, now makeup covers this up, but the goal is and the plan to have a lot of treatments with Shakira where we can do um, some chemical peels and some treatments to my neck and my chest to improve that so I don't have that. And I'm, you know, honestly, I'm completely comfortable without makeup. This is what makes me uncomfortable is having that scar. So what's the first thing? The first thing that I do when I start putting my makeup on every single day, I'm just gonna do exactly and I've already, I'm two minutes in, almost three minutes into this video. So let's start the timer right now because I'm gonna try to do this in without doing a bunch of talking in between so we can see how long it takes me. Because I think it takes me at the most, maybe 10, 15 minutes to do my makeup from start to finish. So the first thing I start with is, and forgive me, that has a little product on it. This is Urban, this has been a life-changing, lifesaver for me. If you have eyelids, this Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. If you have um, eyelids that if you've ever tried to put, and I will show you just how much I put on there. Now I could be putting too much or too little compared, compared to what they tell you, but this is what I do. I put this uh, primer on and then I kind of pat it all over the eyelid. Okay, so you cover the whole eyelid. And I do this before I put any foundation or anything on. Um, but what this will do, ladies, if you have been like me your whole life, and uh, this is gonna be the next product I'll be using, La Base by Lancome. So this is a, a primer for your whole face. Um, back to the eyeshadow primer. If, if your whole life you've been like me, and you have been trying to um, be able to wear eyeshadow, but you put eyeshadow on and an hour later, your eyelids are creasing, I also use Urban Decay. I will link up to all of these this stuff down below. This is an Urban Decay um, foundation. Um, this is why you need a primer. And ladies, if you've if you've tried to wear eyeshadow your whole life and you thought, oh, I just can't because it sweats off, trust me when I tell you that a primer like this, and there's others on the market, I just swear by Urban Decay. Um, and obviously I use a lot of their products. Um, and this is how, how little foundation I put on but I, I smooth it in and that Lancome La Base Primer really makes the makeup smooth on 
quite nicely and get evenly distributed. I don't know why I'm caught. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, but you're gonna see, I'm, and what I'm doing is I'm letting this dry because when you put that primer on, it will typically still have a little crease in the eyelid. So I wait and then I look. And then what I'll do is I'll just tap out the crease in the eyelid and you'll see what I do next. But while that's drying, I'm putting on my foundation now. Just so that you know, this is what I do currently to cover this up. I am not a fan at all of makeup on my neck. I, but it's, it's just something I do because this, um, right now, this stuff makes me feel a little bit better. Thank God I'm getting my hair cut today too. So once this is dry and you can see, um, it's, it's a little white, the powder. So what I do is I take this um, Bare Minerals. Um, it's just like one of their powders. I'll link up to exactly what it is. But I just take this and it's almost like I'm using this to set the, the eyeshadow primer. And then typically, I'll just do a little bit of this. Some people use Urban Decay. Some people use Bare Minerals as their entire foundation. I do not. I just use it to kind of set that. Okay, the next thing I do, but for a second, I didn't have everything here. Um, this, again, Urban Decay. This is the uh, under concealer. And what I do is I put it in here. It's so weird to be doing this from a phone instead of looking in the mirror. But I have been very fortunate that I don't have, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys too, as I'm putting this on, I think that I might need to change my shade on this because I think it's a little yellow for my skin tone, and I'll link up to which one I'm using. I think it's like medium dark. Um, so I put that under my eyes, but I've been fortunate to not have um, under eye circles, um, certainly after getting some filler, you can tend to have, you know, the um, kind of a little bit, because when your cheeks fill up, you'll get a little bit of hollowness, but I really have never felt like, oh my God, I need concealer. I do it more because I have, it's, it's more like slight discoloration and so that's why I use it. But I do think I'm probably gonna change my shade because for me, as I'm putting my makeup on and I see this, I can see that it's a little bit warmer compared to the rest of the other color. But I'll even that out with some when I put the rest of my makeup on. But I like it because it just evens out and I have a couple of little like age spot things that I plan to get zapped off my face and I do tend to cover those up. And so typically as well, I'll look in the mirror and see if I have any blemishes or anything like that. Next up, this is what I use for contouring. So this is one of my favorite things. This is NYX, this is drugstore. You can get it at any, any uh, Walgreens. This is exactly how I do it. I think I watched a video with Kim Kardashian once and that's where I got the basics. Go like this. Under the chin, a little here. I'm gonna also tell you guys this. I do this on my nose. I really think that when I blend this in, it ends up all coming off. And so I really don't feel like the contouring is doing a whole lot for my nose. Call me crazy. And I have a very crooked nose, but I have no plans on having a nose job because I'm just, I'm very shallow, but I really don't care about that kind of stuff or about that kind of detail. So that's how I do it. And then you use this wonderful blending brush to blend in. And the first time you do this, you'll be looking going, oh, this looks so harsh. But it really makes a huge difference. And that's the other nice thing too, is when you start putting this NYX stuff on, it's almost like you're gonna end up getting a bronzer effect on your whole face because of, and this is why you wanna have a headband on or something to pull your hair back when you're doing this. But you see, I feel like when I buff this out on the, on the, uh, 
this part. I feel like I end up buffing out everything that I put on there and I, and I really don't have that. Um, I never feel like my nose looks as contoured as like the cool people. Blush. Now this is darker than I thought. So I, I, I take a very light brush. It looks really dark when I put it on. That's why you rub it in. Sometimes I put a little here. That's it. Okay, we are 10 minutes in and I'm gonna also just estimate we're 10 minutes in, I'm doing a lot more talking. So I'm gonna take off like three or four minutes. Now I have this that I got. This was what I was using for blush, but as you can see, it's gone. So I ended up buying that uh, because I wanted to keep using this. Now, I always start my eyeshadow by covering the entire eye with like a pink or an orange. It's just a thing. I. I I've been liking pinks and stuff lately. So I use a big brush and I put that on. And then I use this for my highlighter, which works really well. So I put that right up here. I really feel like I could do my makeup in my sleep. And that gives that a nice pop. You also want to put it in the middle of your eyes. So that's done. And then, now I just bought a new one of these but I'm gonna use this for, the, for these purposes. I'm obsessed with everything she puts out, Jacqueline Hill. And I have no idea how you say it. Is it Morph? I'm thinking it's Morph. So what I'm gonna be using is these over here. This, this, and this. So first I'm gonna do the crease. And this is really very weird to do the crease. And for those of you that are not good with eyeshadow um, and makeup, honestly, every single thing I've, I've figured out how to do, I learned on YouTube. And I will link up to some of my favorite people. So that's the crease. And then I take a little bit of this gold here and I put that here. Very scientific application, as you can see. Then below, I'm gonna use this dark one here for like eyeliner but I will also be using eyeliner and I'm going to use the same thing but with a bigger brush to do the darkest part of the shadow just on the outside So here's the key too, if you're new to eyeshadow, you're gonna look at all this and go, oh, that looks kind of interesting. The whole thing that makes eyeshadow look the way it does, because this would look creepy as hell. Whoa, is the blending brush. You've gotta get yourself a blending brush, because then what you do is you take all of this and you just literally blend the hell out of it. And then it gets this nice gradient look. See that versus that? A blending brush is, I, I would just say this. Urban Decay Primer plus Morphe, however you say it, eyeshadow, plus a blending brush and YouTube tutorials will change your life. Just saying. Um, so this is like my baseline. And then I'm gonna take out, this is the stuff that I keep in my purse in my makeup bag, which is going to be eyeliner, the three mascaras that I use, and a mascara primer, the lipstick that I use, and the bronzer. So, at this point, I'm using Smashbox. As you can see, I am not loyal to one brand. This, uh, the ladies at Ulta recommended this to me, and it's really awesome because you can twist it and just get a little bit of bronzer out. 
So this is where I kind of even out, get all the shine out of my face, but you know, you even out the tone. I use MAC, I'm down to the very last part of this. This is MAC uh, Spice Lip Liner. I will say this, you guys, you can go back and look at, and this is also Kim Kardashian's new line of lipsticks. So this is Nude, I think this is Nude 2.5. I think I used 2.5 and 3.0. And I always put on lip gloss on top of it. It just adds like another dimension of shine and fullness to your lips. If you just use lipstick, you won't get that full pop that people like. And people ask me about my lips all the time. This is uh, number seven lip gloss. You might think that it's weird the way I'm doing my makeup and I go to the eyes, to lips, to... Now, I will tell you this. This eyeliner, this is from Arbonne. I used to use their skincare years ago. Arbonne eyeliner is the best eyeliner in all my years of wearing makeup. And why do I think this is the best? Now, if you guys want to recommend another one for me, pass it on. But what I love about this is you can put it on and then blend it with a brush. Other eyeliners, if I put it on and wanted to blend it, because I don't want to have a harsh line. I like a smoky eye. Um, and other eyeliners, you go to brush it and it, it's like it erases it. This will stay on, but let you smudge it. Next, we're gonna do eyebrows. Now, hopefully I can film this so you guys can see how I do my eyebrows. Guys, first of all, you have to get your eyebrows waxed by a professional. If you have eyebrows that look like a little sperm where you have like a little bit of a dot here and then a tiny little tail, you need to go to something new. When I see people with eyebrows like that, I'm just like, because you can see that mine still have, even before I've done them, they have an arch. I get them done at European Wax Center. Now, I'm also going to share this little tip. I usually use Anastasia or Anastasia or whatever um, brow products. During quarantine, when all the stores were closed, I ended up buying NYX. I'm gonna tell you this is a close second. Um, so I'm gonna use this up because I got it during quarantine and I, I was able to get it because of the Walgreens and I could just go to Walgreens and Ulta was closed and I didn't wanna wait for shipping. But I usually use Anastasia. This is a little lighter, but it, it does work and this is dark brown. So this is, and, and I learned how to do eyebrows and fill my eyebrows in on YouTube. So I'm going to kind of come up here on the counter so you can see me while I'm doing this. So this is exactly, you kind of have to like lift your, can you guys see? Hopefully, hopefully. And you really are just taking your pencil. And what happens, this sounds really weird. The line will appear. Like as you start filling in, your line, like I was so intimidated to do my eyebrows, but what happens is once you, and, and I'll link to the episode, I hope I saved them, I'm sure I did. I'll link to the people that I, and, and they've probably done a better job filming themselves than I am, but you'll just be able to take your, your pencil here and even where you don't have necessarily hair, you might have hair, but just lighter hair. And what you'll learn by watching more YouTube videos is that nobody really has the perfect eyebrows. They're drawing most of them in. But that's the beautiful thing, is you don't have to have perfect brows. You just have to get your brows waxed and then use these amazing products to fill the rest in. So I really just use the pencil to create like my outline I am also, this is a personal preference, I am not at all, God bless it if you wanna do it on yours. I'm not a fan of having this whole like, 
I'm not gonna fill this in and it's gonna just be natural. I, I think that somebody, my, my personal opinion on that, is that some makeup artist was doing some girl's makeup at a fashion show and he didn't finish and they all went out on the runway and then everyone was like, oh, that's the new thing. Let's not finish our eyebrows. I'm finishing my eyebrows. I like mine to look finished. That's how I do it. So as you can see down here, this is very uneven. You just fill in and then you keep going in a straight line. And then like, I can tell right now I need a, a wax on Thursday because I have a few stray hairs that are sticking out. But see, I'm just filling this stuff in. And that's the beauty of these pencils is they really just are making it very easy to seem like you have just legit fierce brows when really all you're doing is it's like you're filling in the blanks. But again, personal preference, if you want to do that in the corners here, not finish your eyebrows, go nutty. I don't. So as you can see, I've got most of my brows filled in and then crap. I'm missing my little, where's my stage hand? My, um, this is really one of my favorite products and I will tell you this, I bought this little tube of, and I'm gonna have to look up what brand it is. I just have to make sure I keep an eye on time. So I've had this for probably five years. It's taking me that long to use this up. But this is where I take this. So I've already drawn on my eyebrows and then I, it's like a pomade or it's like a, I don't even know. Can you see that? It's like a, it's not a powder. And you're gonna, I'm gonna have to look in this mirror and do it. But really what I do is I take what I've drawn on or filled in with the pencil. And then this will actually make the hairs darker and it, it will make them lie down flat. It's kind of like if you were gonna put a pomade on your, on your hair, it's gonna, it's gonna hold it in place. And you're gonna see also, I'm gonna be trimming these eyebrows because they went up way too high. That's the beautiful thing about Q-tips. You will be able to fix the mistakes. Definitely wanna make sure you bring your tail down here. That's what I call it. Some, some days I'm putting this on and it's like, it feels like there's a hole where it's not, it's just being stubborn. And that's just eyebrows. But again, the, the pencil, I just use that to fill in the shape. Some people just use pencil and they wouldn't, you know, they might just use a brow gel, which I'll show you. I have, a, I have one from Anastasia to, you know, sweep their brows into place. I really like putting this. whatever you want to call it, gel, pomade, on afterwards. Now, I went way up here, so this is how I fix it. First of all, before I fix it, I will use this Anastasia gel to make sure that my lashes are going up, because my lashes do tend to go straight. Okay, then, always have a bunch Q-tips, and this is, this is very scientific. This is what I do. I will literally and then you can see I pulled it down there. So you, yeah, I don't know if that's showing up on video, but so I go underneath too. So those are done, and then usually what I'll do is that thing no one's told you. Don't use those in your ears! Oh my god! And then lastly, we're on the last part. So we're at 24 minutes. 
Again, I'm shaving off five minutes at the beginning, so that's 20 minutes, and I'm shaving off another five because I've stopped to explain some stuff. But I'm gonna say 20 minutes, and when I'm not talking and filming a video, this is Urban Decay Primer. Um, I, I really never used to use a primer, but now I do, and I really swear by it. And here's the deal, guys. I'm only gonna shoot one. Now I feel like I almost, I feel like it's stupid to have you sit and watch me do my mascara. But on the other hand, I've come this far. So I have always used three mascaras. Now some of you are gonna go, oh my God. There's lots of options for eyelashes, okay? Number one, I do use a product that grows my eyelashes. I was using Rodan and Fields. I still think it's an exceptional product. The only reason I have used a different brand recently is that during quarantine, I ran out. My lashes, I, had stopped, I realized that if you stop using this lash primer grower stuff, you will, um, your lashes will start to inevitably stop growing and they'll fall out, not fall out, but you know, they'll thin out. The thing with these priming products that grow your lashes really long, you'll see, I'm really pleased with mine. You just have to keep using them, which makes sense. But, so I started using this uh, product and I'll link up to it because you can get this other product there's a lot of great primers, excuse me, yeah, lash primers that make your lashes grow, available on Amazon for, for like a third of the price or half of the price of Rodan and Fields. I was not buying it because of the price. I, I'm fine paying $110, $120 for Rodan and Fields. I'm just impatient. And when I ran out, I didn't, Rodan and Fields doesn't give you the option for expedited shipping. So you have to order it and just sit around and twiddle your thumbs and wait for it to show up. And if you're impatient and a diva like me, that will drive you crazy. So anyway, back to why I use three. I have experimented with different eyelash products. Some of you, you get your lashes done that doesn't appeal to me because I've seen too many women who get their lashes done and they'll always have a big chunk of lashes missing and it looks really dumb. That's just my personal opinion. I suck at putting fake lashes on. I've tried it. Sometimes they get really good and then I go through a period and you know, I'm getting ready to go out and I can't get the, and I'm in here for an extra 20 minutes trying to get the damn lashes on. So the reason that I use three different products is each one of these, one is like gonna provide more volume. One is gonna thin out and separate the lashes so that I don't have clumping. It's just, it's just a habit. You don't need to use three different mascaras. I've just found that each one adds a layer. And some make the, the lashes thicker, some make them longer. And I really, really personally like to not have them be clumpy. And so when I, especially this one from Smashbox, this will take the mascara that you put on in there and really separate your lashes. And what I found will also keep your lashes from clumping. I don't use an eyelash curler or anything like that. I used to, after I put my lashes on, I'd spend a lot of time doing this. But now I'll just push it up once because otherwise that's when those lashes can tend to stick together and clump. So I'll just push it up once like a curler and then leave it. But as you can see, it doesn't take me that long. And I will say this, doing your lashes from down below like this where you put the, put the primer on first. And you can see how the white shows you where your lashes are. I don't know, it just really works for me. 
and I never wear, I also never wear, because a lot of you guys ask me this, I don't ever wear waterproof. I'm not gonna be hanging out at any pool parties, going in the pool, I don't cry a lot. So I don't really, I just, I don't know. For me, waterproof mascara is like, it's like you feel like you need paint thinner to get it off your eyes. And I don't like that. I like to just be able to wash my makeup off and not have it take seven hours at night. So that's a personal preference. But this is this long comb. Um, so this is the first, um, first lash stuff I use. It's Lancome Go Big, I think. Lancome Monsois Big. And then this is Smashbox, whatever. I think Smashbox only has one mascara. But this is the one that really will take your lashes and separate them. So that's why I put this, I put the, the first um, mascara on to just get the lashes with some volume and some color kind of showing up. And then I use this to separate them out because it's very, if I only used the Smashbox, I wouldn't have any volume. I wouldn't have any thickness to the, to the um, and then this last one is also Lancome. I'll link up to that. And that, I don't know, I think it's kind of like the perfect combination of the two of them. It lengthens them, it thickens them. I don't know, just a habit. By no means do all of you need to do that. What I have learned from other people who have really killer makeup, they do a lot of coats and mascara. So all of this, me doing this, is probably different. Somebody would say, that's a lot of coats. Well, I like long lashes. And again, because I've been talking and pausing, I'm gonna say I've added seven to eight minutes, but it usually doesn't take me this long. And even my man has said, he's like, I've never seen someone be able to get ready in a timelier manner than you. Meaning, I don't take all day. All done. And then the last thing I do is I have an Urban Decay setting spray. I don't really know how this is supposed to work. And it's makeup all over it. But I... Spray it all over. And here's the other key. So I don't know if you can see this, but down here, Whenever I set my makeup out, I set it on my counter. Because if you want to save yourself from having a really messy countertop full of makeup, um, you'll see that my hands have a lot of makeup on them. Just be sure, and this is why I put uh, a paper towel down while I'm getting ready, I set my makeup on it. Now, I, now, because I was filming, I got some in the sink, but it just makes cleanup a lot easier because I keep all of my makeup here in this plastic container stuff like all of those pencils and stuff are in a makeup bag. So I take this nice plastic container and it goes over here in my cabinet. I'm OCD like this. But when you're done, then I just wrap up my paper towel, throw it away. And then lastly, the key is, if you don't want to destroy your furniture and you have a lot of white stuff like me, wash your hands, get the, get the makeup off, and go about your day. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what questions you have. I'm gonna be doing a detailed vlog with all of my favorite makeup, hair care, skincare recommendations. Head on over to kellyalexa.com. Make sure you subscribe. I'll be doing more videos later. I'm back at it. Talk to you guys soon.